Hey, good morning. I'm gonna take you through a behind the scenes look at a full walkthrough of what it takes to make Pass the Aisle the podcast, the video podcast. I'll actually take you through three videos. So in this first video, we're gonna go through the whole setup, the whole room, the whole atmosphere. Go we'll talk about tools that I use. In the second video, you're gonna find how I process the data that I capture here, the audio, the video. Um, and how I export it. And then on the last video, you're gonna see how I actually export these things and share them with you guys. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here we are. Um, it took a while to kind of find a setup that works. And I think um, what's most important if you are creating a set for yourself like I did here, is to maximize the spot as, as much as possible. So what I really wanted to do, I, I had like a vision. So I wanted a two camera setup, which means I wanted a camera solely focused on me and solely focused on my partner um, for this type of show. That way I could really dig into um, what each of us were feeling and just sort of capture it completely like an interview. Um, so I, I do recommend that before you even think of starting up anything is to just have a vision and I'm just sharing what I'm doing with Pass the Isle and my vision and how I wanted to create this and how I wanted to be creative with it, but it's certainly not the only way, right? So I just wanted to share and put out how I do it because I seem to be getting some questions about it. Um, and I would often really be interested in how other people set things up so it could spark ideas for me. One thing is um, space, you know, what kind of space is available to me. This is pretty much open. It's in our loft area. So there's not a lot of, there's a lot of room to actually for sound to escape and not really be so collected. And so it was really important for me that I couldn't really control the reverb from the walls or whatever, um, that I would have a high quality mic. So there are ways to get around um, sound issues because a podcast is mostly focused on the audio portion of it. You're listening to a lot of content and you want your audio to be really good. So um, what we have here are the Rode Procasters and um, Rode Arms and Rode uh, installation or mounts basically. Um, these come separately, so you have to you have to actually get everything separately. So you, the mic is separate from the shock mount, which is important, and the arm. Now the arm is really helpful. You'll see a lot of like bootleg arms out there. Um, they don't have this nice spring back to hold its shape, and this mic is really heavy. So if you're not using something that's suited for it, you're just going to get a lot of flopping mics. Okay. Um, next we have this table, solid wood construction, I can fold it away, which is great. Um, I actually drilled these holes myself so that I could position these mics exactly how I wanted them to be positioned. Uh, next, we have this, what do you call this thing? Like a mix, like a mixing board or whatever. Um, I'll link everything in the description. This is specifically for somebody who wants more than one, possibly four mics sitting around a table and, and talking to each other. Um, also that I can collect or I can store the data from my audio separately from my video onto my H4N, which is just another digital audio recording device. device. Um, so I have a 16 megabyte or gigabyte. I forget, but it's like kind of like a smaller sized card because with audio you don't need that much space. And um, this is a big pro tip. If you're using something like this just to record your audio and you're only going to record about maybe two hours max of audio, even three, I think, um, you're much better using, you're much better off using a lower or a smaller sized memory card so that it can access faster. If you use a really large capacity memory card, um, it actually takes longer to move through things. Um, it's like too big for it. So just use a smaller capacity memory card, like even four gigs is probably good. 16 was my smallest, so I use that in it and it's fine. Um, over here we have um, camera A and then I have another camera, camera B, which I'm filming on right now. So camera A is um, Lumix uh, GH5S and um, it's got a cage on it, it's pretty fancy, but you really don't need any of that. You just need camera A <laughs> for this person, camera B for this person, and that's what I have set up here. Um, both are recording sound, um, like 
on the native on its body by on its own but I'm going to be using this sound that's recorded here and how we sync these two or match these two files up together um, and match the sound with my mouth moving is in post processing and I'll show you how to do that later chords chords so chord management super big thing it's kind of messy I mean I could I could make it look prettier but this is just what it is so you can see everything on top and everything's not hidden away so I've got the mixer connecting to the recording device, the H4N. Um, these XLR cables that give the highest quality audio recorded into the mixer. And then powered all the way down, we have like a, a sleeve of all the cords that are being used here. And then plugged into an outlet here. So this is a lot cleaner than when we first created this sort of set. <laughs> try not to do too much, you know, try to simplify your setup as much as possible and allow your setup to kind of breathe and, and evolve. The space, this little corner of the loft is actually perfect because I could paint it um, in a way that would still look good to the rest of the house, would still look awesome, wouldn't want to be this weird sort of room that it's just for work, but it doesn't fit or provide any positive energy towards the rest of the house. So I really wanted to do it up and have it look very photogenic. Um, so that was important. I think that's, that's important too. And you're making your space and deciding this is where you're gonna show up and do your show, right? And a show usually is like a regular thing. Hopefully you have a schedule for yourself for us. It's every Sunday and we publish every Wednesday. And um, um, when, I, when I see it, when I sit here, when I look at it, I'm pleased. Like it, I put so much work and planning into just the space alone, not even recording or thinking about what I'm gonna talk about, but the space alone and the atmosphere. So when I sit down and I look at these gold uh, railings on this chair or this solid wood and I feel this solid wood desk or I look at this mic and know like, all of this is the shit like I'm proud of it you know what I mean like I want to be proud of my space feel good in my space it's like putting on the clothes to like you know when you're about to go out and you're putting on your suit or you're putting on your dress and you know you look fly you know you look hot hopefully you do and you feel good you know when you look good you feel good that's what I wanted in this space and that's what I actually want to do in every space that I occupy in my home right like if I have 100% control of it I might as well make it the dopest so that I feel the dopest and when I feel the dopest I output and give the dopest. You know what I'm saying? Alright, um, knickknacks, patty wax, put it on a bone, like I just tried to keep things in a certain theme. Um, I think when you're decorating for your space, there's, you, you do want to be functional about it and you do want it to have like, just have it make sense to you. So for me, in my what I prefer and what I like and what makes sense and what was functional is that I needed a matte color on the wall that wasn't going to reflect um, weird colors onto our skin tone. So it was, it's basically just me and cheese. So we have an Asian skin tone, which means we have a green undertone to our skin. I wanted something that wouldn't clash with that. So I picked this very dark, like a midnight matte um, blue. It's like a blue with a um, black undertone. And I actually really wanted it to be a lot darker than this, but the light is showing on this right now. And usually what my idea was, my vision was, when we were going to record the show at night. So at night, this is actually a lot darker. Next thing was I wanted a lot of, I wanted the balance of the metals. So we have our metals here, we have our woods. Um, very just Asian thinking. <laughs> I think it makes sense, but it comes from, I guess, Asian philosophy. Uh, our greens, our plants. Um, yeah, I think I covered all the elements, right? Um, we have our windows and everything. The big accent that I wanted to run throughout here as a metallic was the gold, of course. I've got any gold things that I had, I tried to display them. You know, like our vow book, C3PO. Uh, this wolf thing from <laughs> my sister gave me, um, mm -hmm. copper, skull, gold, that, that's in the gold, this is a metallic, so trying to have just a running theme throughout the space will create a sort of bow on top, will tie things together, and it's just, it's just not a mishmash of things, 
right? So there's um, there's an overlying theme going on here. This has a lot of uh, yellow elements, like the painting, I mean the photograph that uh, my husband took in, in Tokyo. And then, um, you know, of course we have our greens and stuff. So that helps, like even if you don't really know squat about like interior decorating, you know, you can just find little things that can be that phantom thread that runs through everything, right? I just saw that movie. Um, weird. So this is the space, um, and I wanted it to feel equal as well. You know, I didn't want um, one person to be captured in such a way that wasn't equal to the other person being captured. I really wanted us to be equal because this is past the aisle, and what we talk about is our marriage, and we've been just this space is supposed to be a safe healing space for our relationship and our marriage. So um, that too is also played into how I design the space and keep evolving it as we move forward in our, um, in our relationship and in the formation of the show. Like, let's do a run through. You've seen the whole setup. You've seen all my tools. Let's do a run through of how I would actually record a show, okay? Okay, so here we go. Here's our run through. Um, Kevin and I sit down. We do a little sound check on the mics, test one, two. We've got camera A on, camera B on. We've got it focused and lined up to the framing that we want. Our faces are in focus and we hit record there, record there, make sure, making sure all of the cards are in there and uh, reformatted to record this next show. And then I got everything on, this guy's on. And I'll make sure that I'll hit this button twice and make sure that I see our levels here and that I'm speaking into the mic and everything's okay. So I'm the one monitoring the whole show and, and I'm supposed to make sure that everything's being recorded. And it's uh, really rare that I, I get everything on point, but whatever. That's why you need people to manage, you know? And I'm, I can't be the talent and the manager. Okay, so Kevin's over here, right? He's getting set up. So I've got this camera on me, this camera on him, and then what I do is clap, and that is gonna help me make sure that this camera, this camera, this audio, three separate files are all gonna be syncable. I can sync them all up to match the audio in post-processing. And then we begin our show. But yada yada, we record it. And then after that, um, I hit stop on everything. I just collect all my cards and then I face them down to let myself know, hey, I've got, I've got to upload these. And I either do that right away or I leave it till the next morning and I do it in the morning. And that's it. That's a run through. That is my tools, my setup, my thinking and concept behind the whole creation of this space. And I hope that you can take whatever you could from this video and put it into your own, you know, video podcast or podcast. It doesn't even have to be recorded on video, but I think if you were just doing audio too, like if you had a little corner of your house or your home that you're like, okay, this is where I'm gonna create my show. It, it definitely does create a different mindset um, and keep you accountable. Like, I want to go here. I want to go here all the time and record something because it's beautiful, it looks easy, it's confident, um, and it makes me feel the same way. So uh, stay tuned for the next video where I go into my whole process on how I post-process this information and turn it into what you see as past the aisle. See you next time.